Good morning. It's Monday. It's about 7.18 a.m. I am getting ready to start my day with my first period honors chemistry class, but um, I thought I would talk a little bit about what's going on this week. So it is the last full week of classes, believe it or not. I can't believe it. It was like all of a sudden I felt like it was March and now it's June and wow, times have just really gone by so quickly. So my students in the honors chemistry class are working on the second part of their unit menu on equilibrium. We'll be focusing more on the quantitative aspect of equilibrium. So they'll be calculating KEQ. They'll be looking at Q versus K. They'll be calculating equilibrium concentrations using ice tables. And then finally, they're going to be using um, the solubility product constant to take a look at the solubility of different um, ionic salts. So that's a lot to do this week, but I think that we have a pretty good handle on it. My goal is to finish that by Wednesday. At least that's what the unit menu says. Um, I think it's doable though. They're pretty good with math, so it really shouldn't be much of an issue. Industry students, on the other hand, will be working on a project this week. Um, they will be taking some sort of environmental issue of their choosing and using the chemistry that they've learned this year, have to draw some sort of chemistry connection to their environmental issues. So they'll have to really apply what they've learned over the course of the school year to this issue and show basically a direct link or a direct connection between the environmental issue and the chemistry involved. So um, I'm excited because the product that they're going to be showcasing will be an infographic. It's the first time I've done something like this and I had to rely a little bit on our technology department to help us to figure out what you know would be the best um, tech tool to use. So I ended up using um, Easily and um, it's fairly easy to use and I think that's why it'll make a big difference you know, when they're working on their infographic. And the cool thing about it is that they can work on it remotely, kind of like, um, and I guess what I mean is they can work with each other on it remotely, so like similar to a Google Doc. It doesn't update as quickly as Google, but it still works pretty well. So I think that um, that'll help as they kind of work together and they're not gonna be working in more than um, teams of two. So it should be pretty good. I don't know. Um, I, I hope it's good. Um, I hope they like it because it is different. We haven't done this before, but if it works well, maybe we could do this for other topics too. It's Wednesday. It is June 6th. So um, I was not able to vlog yesterday because I was doing some out of district professional development. I was actually um, presenting at uh, Ryder University. I was talking about some of the work that I've done as a result of this grant program. It was a good presentation. Um, I definitely worked with somebody who was awesome to work with and um, everybody was pretty impressed, especially with my station learning and some of my um, phenomena modeling. So I was pretty happy with how it went. They were asking lots of questions and it was great. One thing that really stuck out to me was how important it is to have a PLC because the PLC definitely helps me to be able to um, do the things that I do in my class by offering many different resources and that is especially true whenever you're working with you know creating a unit menu or stations so um, it was it was really valuable experience to kind of see what everybody does in their district but um, you know I hate being out so I had to set up you know sub plans and whatnot fortunately the CP students were working on a project and the honor students were working on the unit menu so I guess one of the good things about giving a unit menu out to the students is that you know as long as the students aren't doing any kind of labs or anything you can absolutely leave a unit menu for the students to do as a great sub plan that way again they can kind of work through things at their own pace so today, um, my students are doing much of the same. My honor should be finishing their unit menu, and then my CP should be finishing their project. Um, they actually have till the end of the class tomorrow to finish it. So um, I think it should be, again, pretty good. I just have a lot of grading to do, as usual. But it is winding down. We are so close to being done. This time next week, I start my very first final exam. Woohoo! about 3.30 in the afternoon. I am busy setting up for, um, I guess, a really a celebration tomorrow with my students. It's our last lab of the school year, and so since we talked about colligative properties this year, I thought we would like a special treat and we could make ice cream. So I wanted to show you the setup and kind of how I do this because I imagine this might be something fun that you would want to do with your students since it is kind of a warmer time of year. So check out my setup. 
Another thing that I um, have for the students is just a table set up where they can, you know, pour like chips into. So the, some students are bringing in chips and whatever, and I have little bowls for them to put their toppings in. I, some of the students already brought in, you know, their material. So a student brought in cups, and then I have the toppings all like here right now. I actually was testing out this recipe with my family over Memorial Day weekend, so that's why I brought in sprinkles and whatnot because I thought, you know, I'm not going to use it, so they might as well use it wondering why I have um, this emoji tablecloth on here so this lab area is right for lab and it also we use it for other things but I wanted to make sure that it was food safe so what I did was I cleaned the lab table but then I also put um, a like a pay, uh, just like a tablecloth on top that I got from the dollar store um, the setup for ice cream is very, very simple. So you've got a few pieces. Mine is electrical. I really like these electrical ones. A lot of people will use the balls that you can roll back and forth, but though that's a lot of cleaning, especially if you have only two people that are making it. So I figured I would kind of do this. Um, so I have a class of 26 students, and so I actually make three ice cream makers worth of um, ice cream. So the container where you make the ice cream is inside here. You can see it's a fairly large container. And then you set it right into this little white um, plastic container. The freezing point depression, like where you add the ice and the salt, is going to be added on either side. And then this is the top that attaches to it, and then this actually goes on the canister as well. To monitor the temperature, I also have um, a thermometer. This is a paddle that goes into the um, little container here so that it, it'll spin and um, this is the rock salt that I gave to them. I also have spoons that I give them so that they can um, serve the ice cream when it's done. As far as the recipe, the recipe is really simple. Um, so the students are asked to all bring in one ingredient and it just makes it fair for everybody, makes it really easy so that everybody can bring in something. You know, I say, I bought the ice cream makers and I bought the, the rock salt, so I'm gonna ask you guys to please bring in some, uh, some ingredients for us. So this is um, the recipe for chocolate, but we make chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. The only difference between the three recipes is that for the chocolate, you just add chocolate syrup and for the strawberry, you add frozen strawberries, but every single one receives one tablespoon of vanilla extract, just tastes better. But this is pretty much what they do. Um, when they come in tomorrow, they'll obviously have their ingredients and I'll tell them, you know, whoever brought in the pint of cream, put, you know, one pint at each ice cream maker and whatnot. And then they decide what flavor they wanna make and they, they just go over and they make it right here. While they're doing that, the plan is to play some games. So um, to play those games, I bought some prizes. So we are gonna be playing Jeopardy, and so I thought it would be a kind of a fun day for them to um, play Jeopardy and review for the final exam. And a lot of these things come from the dollar store, like, you know, believe it or not, the Swedish fish. This, I think the, yeah, the candy and stuff came from Dollar General. This came from Dollar General. This is, this is so cute. So it's like glow in the dark um, slime. This was originally a Valentine's Day card. This came right from Target. But these things, they all make great um, little prizes. So. That's, uh, that's what we're gonna play with. And we've never played a game, so I'm really excited for them to see that tomorrow. My colleagues have been asking me, you know, basically, why are you doing this? Why are you spending so much time trying to set up for this? Why are you spending so much money? And, you know, teachers, yeah, they don't make a lot of money. But, I guess I've had some really, what's the word, difficult, <laughs> we'll say that, I've had some really difficult classes. <laughs> um, last year in particular was a very difficult year for me. There were students that um, I had that just simply refused to buy in to student-centered learning. And I always felt no matter what I tried to do, you know, talk them down, help them, talk to parents, meet with the kid, meet with the parents just it just never quite worked well for them and their attitudes were very negative and you know I think that um, that really put a damper on like how I was feeling about teaching and now after kind of coming back after that year of, of really really difficult students I can now look at the classes that I've had this year and know that that was just an anomaly that was something that you know happens every once in a while, and it won't happen often. 
And so I guess the reason why I'm doing this, to kind of sum that up, the reason why is because I want my students to know how much I appreciate their positive attitudes, how much I appreciate them putting their trust in me as their chemistry teacher to teach them and to lead them and to, to for them trusting me that there is a reason why I teach this way and there is a reason why I do what I do. So I really want to thank them. I want to thank them for the buy-in. Um, I want to thank them for always doing their best. Um, and so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing because they earned it. They deserve it. They're good kids. And uh, after having that experience, it makes me appreciate them that much more. So on that note, I am going to get out of here, but I will see you tomorrow. It's about 3.31. It's funny, it was like the same exact time I got back to you guys yesterday. Um, so I had a great day with my students. I, I had so much fun. It was just great. So um, my students in my third period, they made ice cream today. Um, and then while the ice cream was turning, we played Jeopardy and it was so much fun and there were prizes and whatnot. So it was just a great time. Um, I had a lot of fun with them and, you know, I can't tell you how nice it is as a teacher to know that not only do I have really exceptional chemistry students, but I also have students that have really good manners. They were very, very polite and they were like, thank you so much. I had such a good time. You really did a lot for us today, you know, to have the students be so grateful makes um, just makes me feel like hey like all the work that I put into the course and all the time that I spend grading the papers and working and doing the extra help and you know it really just um, it means a lot to them and they they acknowledge it and they appreciate it and so that that really makes me feel very good my CP students for the most part are doing pretty well with their infographic um, so they are finishing up their infographic between today and tomorrow I gave them an extended um, time period because the program that we were using wasn't working so well so the program I was using was easily and um, it was one of the recommendations from the technology department but it wasn't working um, too great and it was kind of hard to figure out so I thought they could kind of use a day extension so I gave them one more day I said but if you are done you guys could be working on your final exam review packet so tomorrow is Friday I have one more class doing ice cream we are almost done I can't wait <laughs> So it's been a really busy day, the last full Friday of the school year. Ice cream was a success with my first period chemistry students. They really enjoyed it and they really enjoyed the Jeopardy review game. It was awesome. But I, as you might expect, am very, very tired. So I'm going to get out of here. It was a great week, lots of busy stuff. And then next week I've got just a few days and we have final exams and then we are done. I can't believe it.